This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with more than 13,000 classes taught by professionals in design, photography, and much more. You can learn many useful skills to advance your career or just have fun. Click the link in the description to get unlimited access to Skillshare for free for two months. If you like the service, then stay for around 10 bucks a month or cancel with absolutely no obligation. Click the link in the description to get started. Hello everyone and welcome to my After Effects tutorial. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about how to do some awesome stroke animation in Adobe After Effects. So a lot of you may already know how I have done this, but there are a lot of beginners out there who may get confused on how to recreate this effect, especially when there is a stroke effect under the generate category right here. So we're not going to use this effect at all. And there is a much better way to get this uh, effect, this text effect done if you are trying to do this for your promo or for your portfolio or anything like that. So with that being said, awesome people, let's get started. I'm going to create a new composition. I'm going to call this YouTube tutorial uh, underscore main. All right. And I'm going to keep this 720p and you can do this with 4K full HD. Uh, however you like it, but I'm going to keep it 720 for my tutorial. I'm going to take my text tool by pressing Ctrl T. I'm going to start typing something. So I'm going to type in yours. And as soon as you can see, uh, like as soon as I type this out, you can see that uh, my text is already in the stroke mode. So what's happening here is that in the character panel, there are actually two options to color your text. One is the fill which is I think everyone over here would be knowing about this because this is used in every tutorial, but the Lex, uh, the less talked version would be the stroke guy right here. And this is usually behind fill and we don't really go there because it's not, we, we don't necessarily use it a lot, but it's very important. And in and, and, and this situation, it's going to help us out a lot. So I'm going to center it out. And as you can see, what's happening here is that we have taken the fill. I think your fill would generally be something like this. If you want to get rid of the fill, what you can do is you can click on this option, no fill color, this box with a red uh, line across it. If you click on it, it's gonna punch a hole through your text. And as you can see, it is, it's gonna make the fill area completely transparent. And on the other hand, if you click on this box, it's gonna give you the stroke option. Now you can control the width and you can of course control the color of the stroke by clicking on it and you know changing its color like that. And you can control the width of the stroke by this option. So if I increase it, you can see the stroke is getting more. If I decrease it, it's going to get less, right? Superb. Everything in the character panel is going to work exactly the same. So the all caps option, uh, italic, fox bold, everything else works the same. Uh, the only thing is now we are only working with stroke and no fill. Okay. So I hope that may, uh, that clears everything. Awesome people. I'm going to create a new BG now. So I'm going to keep this white or whitish color right lock this out superb now one easy now the the thing is awesome people that if you want to recreate this kind of effect for your uh you know promo if you're working with a client or for your portfolio the only problem with this is that this is destructive this is not uh you know editable this is not adjustable meaning you cannot change the words once the effect is done so you have to you know again confirm it out with your seniors and with your client what words you want and I'm going to show you one way where you can, uh, you know, keep it. I'm going to show you a workflow where you can keep it adjustable, but still you'll have to do a little bit of more work. So when I was cre creating this preview, since I know that this is not for a client and I don't have to keep it adjustable, I kept it like this and I was only working with uh, the text layers, right? Or the shape layers and, and a simple camera. But if you want to keep this thing editable, so your client tomorrow comes in and says, oh no, it's not yours, it's your with the apostrophe, you know, so you can adjust it. What we'll do is we'll pre-compose it. So just uh, right click pre-compose and I'm going to call this a uh, text change here, right? Or I, I can even give it a number if you have many text. So zero one text change here. Uh, we're going to open this and we'll start working. So now what's going to happen awesome people is that, like I said, this is not adjustable. So we'll do a right click on this text and we will choose this option where it says create shapes from text. What After Effects just now did is that it looked at the text layer and then it recreated the exact same thing with the exact same curves and lines and everything with shape layers. So now awesome people, you can see now we are no longer working with the text tool, we are instead of working with the shape layer. If I hit the U key two times, you will see that in the contents, we are having Y and uh, 
O and all the different options over here. So this is exactly what we wanted. Now I can open this layer. I'm going to close the contents. I'm going to go add and I'm going to do trim parts, right? I'm going to open the trim parts and now we can start animating the end property. So now you can see what's happening here is that we just have to animate one single property and the full effect is done. So I'll reduce it down to zero, go to end and I'll move it to about three seconds and I'll increase it all the way up to 100. I select the keyframes, hit the F9 key, go to my graph and I'm gonna just give it a little bit of a ease or actually a little bit of a push. What I want is I want the both the start and the end to have a nice ease amount. So there's a little bit of a you know speed up in the center but otherwise it's a very nice elegant smooth animation. It looks really nice. Super. This is exactly what he wanted. Now again when it comes to the part of editability and changing things that's not going to happen but I have found a little bit of a workaround and that is uh, you can come here again in your text layer and tomorrow your you know your son your senior or your client says oh no it's not yours it's your with an apostrophe you know he wanted something like this so you can change the text layer and then just recreate redo the create shapes from text and now awesome people you can come to your you know your yours layer outline and you can just copy paste this end to this new layer and what's happened is, is, is that it automatically copied the full trim parts. So now you can see that your new uh, shape layer has also been redone. So there's a little bit of work. We'll have to right click and, you know, create shapes and stuff. But otherwise, most of the work is done for us because even the graph has been copied exactly the same, right? So this way we don't have to work around the graph and anything and a little bit of time is saved. Now coming back to our main composition. So we have our base animation done. Right, we have a base animation done, looks good. Let me just center it out. Superb, let me change its anchor point as well. Superb. Next awesome people, uh, we just need to duplicate this a couple of times. But the problem is, if you're trying to recreate this uh, previews thing that I made, now you have to understand awesome people that I added a little bit of more time in creating this. I'll show you what I did here. Um, what I did was, I uh, made this into a 3D layer, this uh, this pre-composition. I enabled the motion blur as well. So the motion blur here as well. And then awesome people, I duplicated the layer, hit the position key. The first layer is not, is not gonna have the position animation, okay? The second layer is gonna have the position. So we'll start the animation, move ahead into about two seconds, and we'll push this third number to a very high number like uh, 2500 minus 2500 so it's going to come closer to the camera and eventually it's going to fade out now the problem is that we are having some pixelation over here in order to counter this what i feel or what i at least what i have done is that i have uh first let me just change the ease to this so i can show you guys a bit better so this is what i have done but when it comes very close to the camera you'll see that we are getting some some um some pixelations and the best way to counter this is to simply add motion blur so it to get rid of at least at least 90 percent of the pixelation is gone and if you even if you play it in the real time you can see it's not really very noticeable if you don't want this pixelation awesome people then you'll unfortunately you will have to work with uh, the shape layers and that way you will not have any pixelation this is not going to give you any pixelation since you are pre-composing this we're having some pixelation what you can also do is you can uh, give this pre-composition a simple blur effect so we can go here to blur and sharpen uh, we can go take the Gaussian blur and at about 130 when it comes very close to the camera we can increase it to 25 right or maybe just 10 frames back we can start increasing and uh, Hey, maybe not 25, maybe a 15. So something like that. So it's going to give like we are trying to fake uh, the depth of field effect. Okay, so I'm I'm going to disable the Gaussian blur for now. Oh wait, let me disable it from here. Superb. Next, awesome people. What we'll do is we will uh, start duplicating the layers. Now, one more thing that a lot of beginners may get confused, and what they might do in order to create the delay effect, what they'll do is they'll create a bunch of duplicates, and then they will offset the entire layer like this. If you were thinking to do this right now, then my dear friends, you would be mistaken, 
because this is going to cause a lot of problems for you because what we want is we do not want to offset the entire animation we just want to offset the position uh, of the layer so we'll undo everything and just hit the p key for the position property and we'll only offset the position keyframes right i hope that makes sense so uh, we'll start with the second layer and you'll have to do this for every single layer and i know it's a little bit of work but the effect in my opinion is really nice and would look really good if you you know use it well if you if you sync it well with the audio and stuff and would make an epic uh text effect for gym intros uh yeah for a gym promo you know and uh, that would look really really nice so this is what we have going on now this is a little bit uh, it, it's not looking that great or is it we'll have to <laughs> we'll, we'll have to wait and see what's happening i think it's looking it's, it's not looking that bad yeah I, th I think we'll have to adjust the the duration a bit uh one more thing that i did uh, in the preview was i added in a camera so we'll do that we'll press ctrl shift alt c create a new camera and now awesome people what i did was i added in a position for the camera so the text layers all the different text layers are coming closer to the camera and I gave a position animation uh, to the camera itself by giving it a little bit of a zoom effect like so like this and uh, let's see how that looks and uh, I think it's gonna look pretty okay so this is how it looks if we were to mess around a little bit it's gonna look even better than that so let's add in a Z rotation we will add that in as well adjust the graph now let's preview this and this is how it looks right so it's not that bad awesome people uh, what we can do is we can enable the depth of field uh, for the camera so we can switch this on and instead of faking it with the Gaussian blur we can actually enable it so we can adjust the aperture to a very high number like 100 and as you can see as it comes close to the camera it's gonna get blurred out so the pixelation is gonna be avoided uh, and this is how we do it so let's preview this and we'll see how this looks So this is how it looks and the best part about the way we made this design is that not only it works with our design and we are getting this multiple stroke effect but the whole thing is very editable so if you feel like that the stroke is a little too much so we can come here to the shape layer and we can reduce its stroke effect down to say oh, sorry I think I had the right thing selected okay we can reduce its stroke from here sorry my bad guys so we can reduce its stroke here from here uh, to 2 and you will see that in the main composition everything here updates right so this is how you can create it uh, again same thing with the color if you ever feel like that the color should be red right your client says oh no it has to be red come here select the stroke effect change it to red and boom in the main thing everything is going to update so this is a benefit of working uh, with pre-compositions and uh, you know this is how you can create a nice stroke layer. So this was my tutorial on how to create some awesome stroke animation in Adobe After Effects. I hope you understood the tutorial. I hope you uh, learned something new about the stroke effect and how you can use it. And uh, thank you for watching. My name is DJ Style. You guys take care. Have a good day.